How's everybody doing? Pretty good, I hope. Now, you might have seen some of my other videos, my previous videos. My YouTube channel is Scale Phrase with a lowercase s. You might be familiar with that. And I initially started out <clears throat> introducing the uh, five finger Stradella bass technique, which is a system that shows you how to use all five fingers on the Stradella side, the left hand side of the 120 bass Stradella accordion. And I did not invent this. This was my music teacher invented this many, many years ago. So I can't take credit for that. But I did come up with some systems and they might or might not be useful. The only way to find out is to send them out there and see what happens. I introduced my Stradella Reed Recognition System. Uh, there's a few videos on that on my channel. Then I talked about my System C Clef Notation System. I already did that. And then I did the first two videos on tone lining. That's how I uh, name precisely name lines of orchestral music. I didn't do the third video yet because at some point when I get into the philosophical astrological stuff it'll it'll all tie in so I'll wait for that. Now today finally after a year and a half I'm finally getting to the the uh, system 2000 chord notation system that's where I came up with a new chord symbol. It's a it's a way to notate chords and I the, the story about the story of how all these systems came into being, if you can see that, is a long, long story and it's beautiful. It's, it's philosophical, astrological, and it basically covers my, most, most of my life from the time I was seven years old. But I'll save that for another video so I don't lose my audience. So let's just do the abridged version of why I even have any of these systems. Let's do the abridged version. Let's just jump up to 1984, okay? We jump up to 1984, and in the mail, I received, I'll try to, I don't think you can see that, but there's June, yeah, June 1984 issue of Keyboard Magazine. I received it in the mail. And in that magazine was an article by Bill Irwin, I'm not being rude, I have to turn to, to pick up my notes from my pile. So in that edition, that issue, uh, there's an article by Bill Irwin, and um, it's called Simple Symbols Signify Semantically. It's hard for me to read this backwards. And in the article, he talks about how people uh, notate chords. There's different ways and there's like 500 different ways and right in the beginning and actually the second paragraph I think it is, yeah, he he mentions, and this is really really important, he mentions a little booklet called Standardized Chord Symbol Notation uh, and that's that's the little booklet that you, you can't see it, but that's the booklet that he recommends that, that you look at to get an idea of how chord notation works. So anyway, so then he said, he said uh, in the article, he said, I would love to hear from you on this subject. I'll read every letter. Now, that was June of 1984. Now, since this is the abridged version of the history of why I have any musical systems, I'll just jump to October 84. And then in the mail, I received my October 84 issue of Keyboard Magazine and in that issue he followed up on the June article and it's called More on the Chord Symbol Flap. Now for me this was critical. This is this is a big big moment for me. And he talked about uh, the the uh, the ideas that people mentioned when they wrote in, the ideas that they contributed and he goes on and on. It's a really, really nice, nice article. And in the very last paragraph, I received an honorable mention. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if I can get that in there. This is really difficult to, to, to operate on this old iPhone 4. But 
He says, see, I got Joey D'Agostino right there. I got an honorable mention. And that just made me jump for joy because uh, I'm an uneducated man. I have no education. Barely made it through high school. Uh, my life was a mess. And somebody actually listened to me. It was like a miracle. So, so that was that. Then I started to really seriously think about these ideas that I had. I had way before 1984, but we'll, we'll talk about that in another video. So let's jump quickly to 1996. And for those who are interested in the philosophical or astrological aspects, when I retell this, it's going to be great. It's a great story. So I jumped to 1996, and my, my wife and I and uh, uh, two of our children moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they call it the Land of Enchantment. All right. Well, I immediately purchased a book called Improvising Jazz Piano by John Mahegan. I bought this book because I thought maybe I could learn how to play piano properly, especially like, um, like a jazz feel. Well, that never worked out. I never really learned how to play piano correctly to this day. But in the book, when I was studying in the book, <clears throat> I got to page... 62. When I got to page 62, the, the, the page was entitled Modes. It says Modes. And on that page, there was very little print. He mentions a few modes, just a few modes, and there's hardly anything on the page. And then within the next month or two, I had written down all these notes. Most of what you see is what I wrote. Because when I saw this page, all the stuff that I had picked up psychically, life experience from 1960 to 1996, I couldn't stop thinking about this because all this stuff started to come into my mind and, and, and made me think. And, it, and, it, and a little voice, it's my subconscious, I guess, said to me, um, you need to work on this. This is something that you have to do before you die. And I was much younger then, but the point is, I couldn't stop thinking about this. And every time I'd get a new idea, I'd run to my wife and I'd tell her, and she would got so annoyed because I wouldn't stop talking about it. So, so that was that. I, she bought a computer for us, our first computer, and it was like magic. All of a sudden I start typing, and I didn't know how to type, but I start typing, and I type correctly with, the, with all my fingers. <clears throat> and all the ideas from 1984 to 96, it took me 12 years to really, really put it together. In, in two and a half months' time or so, maybe two to three months, I had it all typed out and all ready to go, though it needed massive editing. Um, but the point is, that's how that came about. <clears throat> now, being... being of a low income kind of person most of my life and being kind of a procrastinator I didn't try to get it well, I tried to get it published but no publisher wanted it I had like 12 rejections no, nobody wanted it so so by the time um, it got to 2002 all right by 2002 we were living in on an island in Washington state we lived on an island and for years I had been looking for I had been, hold on a second, I had been looking for that booklet that Bill Irwin mentioned in his first article, that standardized chord symbol notation, and I couldn't find it anywhere, but when I got to that island uh, in Washington, actually we lived in a town called Anacortes, it was on an island, I went on the computer and I, and I found that Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington, yeah, Bellingham, I think it's called, had a copy in their library. And um, it's only 46 pages, this book. So I drove up there. It's up near the border of Canada, Washington and Canada. I drove up there. I'm reaching over. And I held that little booklet in my hand. And this is a photocopy of that. It's only 46 pages. There's nothing to it. 
But when you go on the internet now and you look for this book, you can find maybe eight, nine, ten copies on the internet in the world, and they start at fifty dollars a piece, and they, and they go up to like two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars just to get a just to get a book like this, this little little book. And it was just stapled together on, on the edge. It wasn't even, had a regular binding. Didn't even have a regular binding. So the nice girls at the library at Western Washington University, well, I only had 30 minutes of parking or the security would kick me out because I wasn't a student. So I, I parked, I had 30 minutes, and the, the nice people at the library there let me not only look at the book, but they let me use their copy machine, and since I wasn't a student, I didn't have an official copy card. They gave me free copy cards. They paid for my copies and sent me on my way, and that was it. I drove back, so I made it, and I had a little help from uh, some of those great people up there at that, that university, and I got a copy, and I read it many, many times to make sure his system didn't conflict with mine, and... It's okay, but mine's better. I, I don't mean to sound pompous, but I, I worked 12 years on this. Now, the beautiful thing is that that work, okay, this by Carl, Carl Brandt and Clinton Romer was only two. This is only one of two serious works on chord symbol notation in the 20th century. Only two. And I'm reaching again. And mine was the other. See, System 2000 chord notation. It's, uh, it's, it's in my book. Anyway, and so what I've been trying to do is show everybody all the stuff in my book so they don't have to buy it because that way if they get bored or they don't feel like they wasted $11. I mean, I try to basically sell for nothing. So the point is, the beauty is, and I'll, I'll go into this in my, my longer version, my philosophical version of this story, is the previous, in other words, prior to my thinking in my work, the only people to do a study, a serious study on this, serious, deep, professional was these two guys. Once again, Carl Brandt and Clinton Romer. Now you're tired of hearing that, right? Well, that's not the end of it. And this can't be coincidence. This is just, this story is, this story would take about an hour, but I'm doing the short version. Carl Brandt. On my dad's side, I'm Joey D'Agostino. That's how you pronounce it in Italian. D'Agostino. But some people say D'Agostino or D'Agostino. It doesn't matter. But I'm half Italian. D'Agostino. But I'm a Brant on my mom's side. Now, when I saw, I first saw this, I thought, this, this can't be... You can't make this up. You just can't make it up. Brant. And then remember... Carl Brandt did this, and then his buddy Clinton Romer, they did this. And Carl Brandt, by the way, wrote music for Hollywood. Um, on the, I think he did music for Andy Griffith's show, the old Andy Griffith show, and, and other stuff. You can see it on TV when you watch the credits. Every once in a while, like maybe once or twice a year, you'll see Carl Brandt's name in there. That's the actual Carl Brandt. So, so if this is my dad, then this is my mom, Brandt. Now... The first really interesting thing, and I'm going to try to go fast, is on my dad's side, the D'Agostino is the father's side, Stortoni is the mother's side. There's a zillion people in the family. The Italians kept having babies all the time, and they had all these people. All, he, has all these, he had all these relatives. They're all dead except for one. And none of them were musical, truly musical. Not one. On the brand side, had a whole bunch of people all over here in central Pennsylvania. Uh, they're all Pennsylvania German, they call them. And oh man, people everywhere. Nobody was musical except except my grandmother, my my mom's mom, and me. Nobody else out of hundreds of people. Now, so you saw 
on my mom's side, she was a brand. Okay. Her dad was a brand, Martin Brand, and his wife Annie, her her family was the Farver. Her maiden name was Farver. And her her mother's maiden name was Gruber. And you go back, now this might not be the exact way, but uh my uncle, my mom's brother, did the genealogy study. You need to go to the internet and do that now. And shows that we came from either with one of the sons of Franz Gruber. He's the guy who wrote Silent Night, the music. He wrote the music part. I'm, I'm a descendant of Franz Gruber. Now, don't you think... It's weird, I'm the only musical person in, 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 in a pile, a massive pile of Italian and German people. The only one. And, and don't you think I was predisposed to do something musical? Now, I apologize for taking so long, but I want to show my chord symbol. Because in my book, I'm going to show you this on the whiteboard for free. You don't have to buy anything. And um, I, I am going to introduce slowly, see the uh, System 2000 chord notation, and I'll, I'll go into some detail, and I, and I want to share with you actually what really goes on with the chord. I just don't want to show you chords and bang them on the piano and, 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 and go through all this stuff. There's thousands of videos on YouTube that show you how to play a chord, a name a chord, but... The, the problem is, there's no, even after Carl Brandt and his buddy, even after their work, there was no consensus or agreement. There was no unity on, on this, how to symbolize chords, how to write them down, blah, blah, blah. And so my whole goal in everything I did musically, everything I do, all these things I show you, was to simplify and to standardize. To simplify and standardize. Some of my videos I think are so simple people say that guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. But my whole idea, my, my, my systems is to simplify and standardize. Now I don't know if it's going to happen in my lifetime. I'm 65 and I'm in bad, bad shape. But I'm going to give it a shot. So in the next video we're going to talk about the chord symbol, the chord itself. We're going to look at the chord, strip it down to nothing, and take it from there. And um, hey, it's just an idea. If you don't like my chord symbol, don't use it. But I have to share this. And um, that's it. Okay, I know that was too long. But um, next time we're going to do the, the the basics of the chord. And I, and I hope I can uh, give you something useful. Something uh, that you can um, help you with your music. Thank you and good night.